Installing drivers may seem like such a simple thing if you take it at face value. But what is a driver? We are going to cover drivers, what they are, what they do, how to install them, how to know when to install them, and what else they can do for you. So let's begin the lesson. In a sense, drivers are translators. They are pieces of software that speak the language of the operating system and the hardware they are written for. Hardware speaks small pieces of code that are usually specific to each type of unit. The operating system speaks a language called system calls. These calls do not directly do anything to the hardware. They hook up with the driver and execute the call by way of the software. If you were looking to print a picture in the operating system, it might request a print of a file, but the actual print action is carried out by the printer and the software installed for it. Some drivers are more complicated than others, whereas some hardware is almost completely self-contained. A good example of this is a dial-up modem. Old modems had entire chipsets on them dedicated to telecommunications actions. These modems had relatively simple drivers that were just interfaces for talking with the hardware on the card. Today, if you try to buy a dial-up modem, they are small cards with only a single chip on them. The reason for this is that the functionality of the modem was actually moved into software because it's cheaper to produce modems in this manner. The chip on the modem is now a little more than a telephone. The connection and line management is all handled in the driver's software, and it just tells the chip to generate certain sounds that translate into modem functions as it sends and receives data. If you load up a brand new installation that you've just performed, or you've installed a new piece of hardware, you may notice that it isn't working the way you would like it to. Your screen resolution may be off, and the display may look funny with washed out colors. The sound might not work. You may not be able to connect to the network. What happened is that when the operating system loaded, it detected this new hardware and tried to assign a driver to it on a best match basis. In some cases, it had nothing that matched and the device was turned off. In other cases, it had a generic driver that enables the device, but its higher functions are not accessible. Sometimes the operating system has a full driver for the device and it just works right out of the box. Similar to the BIOS in a motherboard, if the current driver is doing everything you want it to do, you should probably leave it alone. Installing new drivers, because you can, is generally a recipe for some self-inflicted problems. Drivers can have bugs called regressions, which result from changes that needed more testing. Older drivers have been tested and regressions are less likely to be apparent. Some drivers will improve performance or eliminate bugs with their newer versions. Some drivers also have functionality improvements. The most recent one to come to mind is video drivers that support Flash 10.1. Flash 10.1 allows your video card to accelerate the Flash videos you watch on the web. This makes it easier for your PC to handle high definition web content in a manner that is both efficient and does not interfere with the other functions of the PC. How can I tell if I need new drivers? And if so, which ones? Aside from the normal signs of the computer not functioning the way it should, you can check the device manager directly. In order to check the device manager, go to your menu button, hit start, go to my computer or computer in Windows 7 and Vista, and hit properties. So pull up a list in XP, you hit the hardware tab and go to device manager. You see, what you see here is a list of the devices that are currently attached to the computer. Devices that are, norm are functioning properly will show up in the list, and you can expand the list by hitting the plus sign. Devices that are not functioning properly or do not have a driver installed will be listed under other devices, and they will have a yellow exclamation point. They can also be listed under uh, other categories if the driver is not functioning properly, but the computer knows what the part is. If it has a red X, that means the device is disabled. If you right click on a device, you can disable it or uninstall it. And if a device is disabled, you can right click on it and hit enable to re-enable it. In Windows 7, as in Windows XP, you can go to the menu, right click on computer, go to properties, and device manager is here on the upper left hand side. Clicking Device Manager brings you to the same menu that you saw in Windows XP. The devices are all laid out 
and the pluses have been replaced by a small triangle uh, rig that is identifying uh, them having more devices underneath the attached device. Same as before, the yellow exclamation points mean that there is not a driver currently installed, and red X's mean that the device is disabled. Right-clicking on the device brings up the same list and menu that was in Windows XP. Clicking Update Driver Software will allow you to browse the computer for the drivers that you've downloaded yourself, or automatically search Windows Update for your drivers. Before we go looking for drivers, we can attempt to bring the drivers to us. If you've pulled up the Device Manager and you are looking at the list of devices attached to your computer, you can right-click on a device that you do not have a driver for and click Update Driver. This will give you an opportunity to scan uh, Microsoft's drivers that they have in their Microsoft Windows Update uh, service. If you click Next and it goes through looking for the driver and it doesn't find one, it will then look for the driver on the system itself, and then if it cannot find it there, it will then ask you to provide one. You can also access the Windows Update driver feature by going to Windows Update itself, which on many computers will be under the Start menu in Windows Update. In order to access the drivers that are available through Windows Update, you're going to want to use the custom option. In Windows 7 and Vista, this will be the non-critical option. Click Custom, let Windows Update uh, process for a second. It will then give you a list. The list says high priority updates, which are usually software and uh, bug fixes, software optional, and hardware optional. Hardware optional, in this case, contains three drivers for our system that you can install by clicking and reviewing. In this case, we're going to clear out the other updates so it only installs this driver for us. Clicking install updates will install the driver for you. The driver will download and then proceed to install. Once the driver is installed, the system will usually require a reboot. If you've purchased a new PC, your driver should be preloaded with your system restore. If you've built your own PC or had to install the operating system from scratch, then what? If it was a retail unit, you should still be able to find the drivers on their website. If we load up our web browser, and you head over to www.hp.com, we're going to be looking for the support link on their website. In this case, the support link is here in the upper middle. Click Select Download Drivers and Software and put in the product name of your PC. If you're running this from the PC and you have internet access on that PC, you can hit Start Detection. It will install a small piece of software and scan your PC for you and tell you which one you have. In this case, we will use a DV2225NR, which is an older HP laptop that came preloaded with Windows Vista. If you see your product correctly listed here, you can then select your operating system. If you select an operating system that was not supported on the device at launch, there may not be drivers available for it. In the case of Windows XP, if we hit Next, there are a couple of drivers, but they're not really for the hardware. They're more of the HP applications that they like to preload on their, on their machines. However, if you select Windows Vista, which is the operating system it came with, you'll notice that there are files available for audio, chipset, graphics, keyboard and mouse, modem, network, and more. In this case, if you were looking for a driver uh, for the audio card, you open it up and you see two Connexent high-definition audio drivers. 
And the differences between these are their versions and the date when they were launched. One of them is from 2006, that was the launch uh, driver, and an updated one was released in 2008. Unless specified, you're going to want the one that's newer. You can click download, and you can either download it or install now. After it is downloaded, it can install to the system. You may either have to run it manually, or it may install itself depending on the file you've downloaded. After it is run, you will most likely have to reboot the system. Another large retail service provider is Dell. If you click for home, which would be you know, consumer laptops, desktops, most of the things you'll, you'll encounter out in the, in the uh, workspace, you can click on their support link. Drivers and downloads, and a similar but not identical process appears. Dells all come with a service tag mounted on the, on the case of the machine, or you can select by model, or you can even make a list if you decide to register with their site. If you select a model, in this case we'll go with a Dimension Desktop. The Dimension 2200 is an older desktop, but as you see, once again, you can select your operating system and you'll be presented with a list of drivers to download. Also with these, you'll download them, run them, and they will either install on their own or you may have to run them manually, and after the driver installs, you'll have to reboot the system. If you buy a new piece of hardware, they usually come with install utilities, like this one. This is the Asus Install. It's a motherboard CD that comes with the motherboard drivers and a utility to install all the drivers in one shot. It'll help you automate the process and install every driver on the disk. The disks might also come with utilities to help you monitor or use the hardware. Manuals, which used to be distributed on paper, are now distributed by file. Just because something is on the disk does not mean you have to install it. It's just like when you download a program and it has a checkbox asking if you would like to install something to make your home page or like to install a toolbar. In this case, Asus Install comes with Norton Internet Security 2009. There's no actual requirement that you install this software. However, if we hit the Asus Install, it will come up with an option asking us to install the drivers and all the recommended tools, customize the installation of drivers, or install the drivers only. In this case, I'm going to click Customize and show you the list. I already installed the network driver, so it has already been des uh, deselected. In this case, I would rather not install the EPU4 engine, and I would not like to install Norton Internet Security 2009. You hit Go, and it's going to automate the installation of the drivers, and when one is done that requires a reboot, it will automatically reboot the system and bring it up and continue the installation. Right here it gives you a list of the remaining time. It, it estimates that there is about five minutes remaining in the driver install process. Installing drivers for hardware that you've purchased is really this easy. Most of it comes with these utilities to help you install them. Some hardware, especially more simple hardware, mainly network cards, possibly uh, wireless cards, will come with just a simple file uh, with a couple of drivers in it. In this case, you'd have to open up the device manager select the piece of hardware that you would like to install the driver for. In this case, uh, I will use the video card. You click Update Driver, select No for the automatic update, You're going to install from a specific location, click include this location in the search, and then browse to the uh, location of the folder. In this case, it would be on the CD or wherever you copied it to. After you have selected that file, you can hit next and it will install the driver for you. This is how you install the drivers on 
uh, products where the CD does not include a utility to help you install the drivers. If you decide to download a driver from a website for a reason such as the driver included with the product was horribly out of date or it just didn't work, then you will go to the manufacturer's website and download the newest driver for your hardware. In this case, we're going to go find the driver for our video card. Our video card is an NVIDIA G210. If you go into the device manager, and under video card, uh, display adapters, sorry, you will see the NVIDIA GeForce 210. going to go to download drivers on their website. You're going to pick your product family, which in this case is a GeForce. The product series, which is a 200 because it's a 210. And the model. And you're going to click search. It will give you the newest driver that is currently certified for your operating system for the current card. Newer operating systems, such as Windows 7, may not have drivers for older video cards that do not support all of the features that they're using in their desktop. You click download, you get an agree, uh, a little terms thing, and you'll click save. And as soon as it's done downloading, you can run it. The software should pop up a small warning asking if you is truly what you want to run. And in this case, yes. In Windows Vista and Windows 7, you will get the uh, UAC prompt where the screen will darken and it will, uh, it will load up and ask you if uh, you are authorizing this, uh, hard, this software to execute. After you've clicked Next and told it that it can install, the video driver is installing currently. And what it's doing is it's swapping the files from one driver to the other one. So it's unloading the video memory and reloading the video memory on the new file. That's why the screen goes black. When it's done, it will ask you if you want to reload the PC. Restarting the PC will allow the driver installation to complete and will give you full functionality of the video card if the driver you downloaded was for your product. This section should have taught you about what drivers are and how they function. Installing them should no longer be a mystery to you and you should be able to identify when you need to install them.